Hello, Beza Youth. Welcome back to our youth service again. Um, I'm sure you guys are having an, an awesome time with me, with the Word of God, with worship. Uh, we just want to welcome you to our service again. Uh, stay tuned. Enjoy your stay with us. Before we get started, let's pray and we'll go right into it. Father God, we invite you to this place today. We pray that you'll just come and teach us what you want us to learn, Father God. We're here to listen. We're here to learn from you. Um, open up our, our eyes, open up our hearts, Father God. Teach us what you would please do. It. Teach us your heart, teach us your ways. Uh, we're excited to hear from you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Um, so for the past two weeks, We've been talking about salvation and the life after it. And last week, uh, we talked about three things. Uh, we talked about one, um, the journey of salvation, which is a journey of truly, truly knowing God. And second, it's a journey of discovering who we are in Him. And the third point was it's a journey of relationship with the Lord. So those were the things that we talked about last week. And we said, if we really want to discover ourselves and find ourselves, then we must truly get to know God and know who He is. And this journey of salvation at the end of the day is not really about us, but it's a really about God and His plan and His desire for us. So, and this week with that in mind, this week we're going to talk about uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 from 12. Um, since the beginning of this series, we've said that following Christ is a changing your life story. It's basically changing your story and how you've been living and how you've been doing life and committing to the new story you are writing with the Lord. So after you make a decision to change your life and how you do it, you commit to that decision and you commit to allowing God to rewrite your story. And this chapter, Romans chapter 12, uh, goes into detail to show how that Jesus Christ is to be Lord of ev on every area of our life. So this chapter, uh, Paul talks about how Christians, uh, us as a Christians, should allow God to be Lord over every aspect of our life. Uh, it's directed towards the goal of showing that God demands our action as well as our believing and thinking. Faith expresses itself in obedience. When we started this uh, series we said that salvation starts from faith it's not something you understand or it's not something you logically decode in your brain and be like okay now i get it so i'm gonna go ahead and then you know live out salvation it's something that you believe for yourself personally so it requires faith believing that god can save your life and can give you salvation but after salvation the journey of relationship with the lord and the journey of salvation uh, requires obedience on top of your faith. You can't, you cannot just sustain salvation just because you believed. You have to show it out. You have to show out your salvation through obedience. So we're going to read the chapter, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, and we'll continue. Uh, so it says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true, proper, and proper worship. Um, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God, God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Uh, so this chapter talks about what it means to present uh, a holy sacrifice and worship to God and how we should renew our minds. So when I was researching uh, on this chapter, preparing for this preaching, uh, I came across a few questions that are really intrigued me and I really want us to talk, to discuss about and like talk about these questions. The first one is, what does Paul want God's people to prioritize here? So when he starts this verse, this chapter, it talks about, by the way, I really encourage you to go ahead and read uh, Romans chapter 12, the whole chapter, because it really talks about uh, how we can lead our life as Christians and as a person who knows Christ and as a person who has committed to start this journey of relationship and salvation with the Lord. It really helps. It talks about renewing your mind. It talks about sacrifice and worship, true and holy worship. And it talks about how we can be uh, a servant in God's kingdom and in His body. And it talks about how we can live out love in action. 
So if we have time, we'll go deep and see the different topics in this chapter. But if not, go ahead and read it for yourself. It's really interesting. So the first question that I really want us to talk about is, like I said, what does Paul want God's people to prioritize here? When he started, he said, I urge you. That's how he started this chapter. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters in Christ. So he's urging the people that he's writing this letter to, to prioritize um, their, about their worship and their sacrifice unto the Lord more than anything. Why? That is the one thing that he, he wants them to prioritize and to focus on more than anything. And mercy of God, after receiving the salvation and the mercy of God, what I really want you to focus is on how you can offer up your body as a living sacrifice and how you can worship God in, in, in spirit and in truth and holy worship unto God, offer a holy worship unto God. So what Paul is urging us to prioritize as a person of faith is our sacrifice and our worship. The second question following that is, what does it mean to present one's body as a, as a living and holy sacrifice? So it goes ahead and talks about, I urge you to offer your body as a living and holy sacrifice unto God. What does that really mean? Like, if you really think about it in the Old Testament, uh, how the people approached God and asked for mercy for their sins was by offering animals as a sacrifice so that they can be slaughtered in, 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 in the church and then, then they pray and ask for forgiveness. Is that really what he's saying? Is he saying offer your body as a living sacrifice so that you can be slaughtered, so that you can be forgiven? I do not think so. But I read somewhere that really explained my thought is it says not merely a ritual activity, but the involvement of heart, mind, and body and soul after having the new life of Holy Spirit, obedient service. That is the kind of worship God is most concerned about. So when Paul said, offer your body as a living sacrifice unto the Lord, he's not talking about, you know, go ahead and then, you know, literally, literally offer your body as a living sacrifice. But he's saying as a person, as a human being, we have mind, body and soul, right? We're not just mind, we're not just body or we're not just soul. We're a combination of those three. So our mind, in our mind, we have our will, right? Our free will, what we think about, what we decide, what we want to do, and all of that, God has given us a free will of our own, our own, and we have a body, like the literal body that we carry, the flesh that we are in, and then we have soul. And all these three things come together forms who we are right now as human beings. So when we offer our body as a living sacrifice unto the Lord, um, he's not, Paul is not talking about rituals or, you know, things that we're used to or anything or the do's and don'ts of the Christian life or anything, but being obedient enough to sacrifice our free will and then choosing God's will over our life and to be conscious of our body. Honestly, as, as Christians, as a person of faith, uh, you need to be conscious of your health. You need to be conscious of your, your body, how you take care of your body uh, really matters because once you are obedient enough uh, to commit and to giving up your will uh, so that God can unveil his will over your life, that means he also has will and he also have a desire for your health and for your actual body. And then there is your soul, which is for it to be saved through this whole salvation. So I believe when Paul said, uh, offer yourself as a living sacrifice, he's talking about all these, all these three things coming together and us offering our free will, our heart and our body and our mind and our soul unto the Lord and, say, and saying, Lord, I give up my will and you rule over me and you take charge over my life. And when we do that, we start living our life accordingly and with that in mind. So I believe um, that what Paul meant when he said, offer yourself as a living sacrifice. The third question I want us to touch upon is, what does it mean not to be confirmed to the world? So after he talks about offer yourself as a living sacrifice, because it's the truest form of worship, and that's what God wants us to do as we say we are a worshiper of Jesus Christ, and then talks about do not be confirmed to the patterns of this world. That was the, the second thing he mentions in this verse, is for us not to be confirmed 
to the patterns of this world. And what does that really mean not to be confirmed to the world? Well, one thing I want us to know, uh, I want all of us to pay attention to is the pattern of this world is the pattern we were, we were in before we accepted salvation, before we became Christian and before we started this journey of relationship of truly knowing God and discover, discovering who we are in Him. So it's not a one-time thing. It's the pattern of this world. It's not an event or it's not, a, again, a one-time thing. It's something that we've been learning up until that point where we decided to commit to the Lord and receive salvation. So when Paul said, do not confirm to the patterns of the world, uh, so not confirming to that pattern is also not a one-time thing. You know, it's not an event. It's not, I mean, oh, I'm a Christian now, so the worldly life does not tempt me, or you know what I mean? I'm not gonna be tempted, or it's not, I'm not gonna be tested by it. We will be tested by it, and we will be tempted. So the process, it's a process. Not confirming to the world is a process. It's a continual thing that we unlearn our brain of the patterns that we've been learning so far. For example, um, I'm a young adult. So in my time here on earth, there are so many things that I've learned, so many things that I've stored in my mind that it affected my thought process because my thought process doesn't just up and you know be created in my brain since i was a little girl up until now i've been observing different things i've been learning different things from school from my family from friends from god from the bible a lot of things from my pastors from my church from different settings i've been decoding and i've been learning and i've been storing a lot of information a lot of things in my brain so who i am and how i act somehow comes out of everything that I accumulate and, and then store in my brain. So when, at, at some point, when I gave my life to Christ and I said, okay, Lord, I want, I'm, I'm accepting your salvation and I'm committing to this long process of relationship, long journey of relationship of knowing you and discovering who I am in you, uh, my process of unlearning all those unhealthy and unnecessary uh, knowledge and the things that I stored in my mind begins then. Because the first thing that God does after salvation is restore uh, our soul, restore our mind and restore what we've been learning, the wrong things that we've been learning about Him, about ourselves, about our life and about His desire over our life. So not confirming to the world means not confirming to the patterns that you're used to. For instance, if you used to believe or still believed that you are worthless or that God doesn't exist maybe, or that God, God doesn't have a purpose for your life or God doesn't notice you, uh, after you commit your life to, to Christ and after you start this journey of salvation and this journey of knowing Him and discovering yourself in Him, um, you have to remind yourself not to confirm to that thought process, to that pattern of thinking I am worthless or God does not exist or God doesn't have a plan for my life. You know, all of those lies that you've been accumulating, you've been learning so far, they need to stop now. But then again, it's not a one-time thing. They just don't up and, you know, vanish or disappear uh, because you became a Christian. It's something that you need to remind and you need to learn it's a process so that i believe that what paul meant when he said do not confirm to the patterns of this world what he means is uh, start the process of unlearning the unholy things that you've been learning and the lies that you've been storing in your mind in your heart all this long okay so the following question uh, after this that i want us to ask ourselves and also talk about is how are God's people transformed? So if we're not going to be after salvation, if we're not going to confirm to the patterns of the world, then we need to be transformed into something, right? Which is a life with the Lord, with the Lord and then a life of knowing Him again and knowing who we are in Him and a life of relationship with the Lord. And that is called the transformation of our lives after we accept Jesus Christ and we start the journey of salvation. So how do we do that? 
It's also written um, on this chapter, on this verse, the second verse talks about, it says, renew your mind. How we transform who we are, how we transform as people of God is by renewing our mind every single day. Like on the third question, we said, uh, how do we not confirm to the patterns of this world? And we said that is a process. Not confirming to the patterns of this world is a process, right? It's a process of unlearning a lot of things, a lot of lies, a lot of unhealthy practices and unhealthy thoughts. And how we unlearn all of those is by renewing our minds every day in the Word of God. That's This is what Paul tells us. You just don't up and be like, okay, from here and out, I'm not going to do this and that. All the unhealthy practices that you used to do, um, you can't do that on your on your own with your might, you know what I mean? So you have to renew your mind every day. That's like basic logic. If you want to unlearn one thought process or if you want to unlearn one unhealthy practice, practice, then to take that out of your life, then you need to find out the healthy practice or the healthy thought process. For instance, like I said, if you have a self-worth issue, if you're the kind of person who thinks like, I'm not worth it, I don't have a worth in this world, or God is too busy to give me a purpose in life, or you know, all of those thoughts, those are unhealthy thoughts. And because of that, you will develop unhealthy practices because you feel you're unworthy and you're worthless. Uh, you started doing things that are beneath you because you think you deserve that. But after accepting Christ and starting this journey of salvation, God's desire for you obviously is not so you can be worthless. That's not how he gets the praise. He doesn't make you worthless so that he can get the glory. No, how he gets glory is by putting you, by growing you into a place and by making you become who you truly are and how he created you and that's not worthless right so but then in order to get there in order to learn uh, that truth you have to unlearn the lie right but the only way you can unlearn the lie is by practicing the truth each and every day it's by renewing your mind with the truth each and every day so you wake up in the morning and you think maybe it might not be the first thought in your head but then at some point eventually you would think Am I really worthy? Am I a worth, uh, you know, am I a worthy person or am I worthless? When that thought process creeps in into your mind, you will have to stop, remind yourself the truth, and then renew your mind with that truth. Um, you wake up in the morning, you have doubts about something. We're humans, we go through that. I go through that, I can admit that. So different days I have different doubts about life. You know what I mean? Because a lot of things happen and you know, things happen in life so in that thought process i might think oh lord am i gonna really like overcome this or am i gonna come out of this alive or better am i gonna make it or not whenever that lie or whenever that doubt occurs in my head and creates a thought process uh, i have two choices one to confirm to that thought process which means to confirm to the pattern of the world what beats you down and two is to renew my mind with the truth. So in that moment, I can make a decision. I can say, I can give in and have a pity party for myself all day long, thinking that I'm not gonna make it, this life is so hard, you know, all of that. Or I can choose to go to my father and to my God and ask him what the truth is, ask him what he thinks. And that truth will renew my mind into knowing him more and into finding myself in him. And the only way we can renew our minds, it's also written in this chapter, in this verse, is by studying the word of God. So how we transform our minds and how we transform our thought process and how we start that journey of unlearning unhealthy practices and unhealthy thought processes is by renewing our mind each and every day, not once in a while, you know, not when we feel like it or not when we think we need it the most, but each and every day by going back to the Word of God and then renewing our mind. That's how we get transformation. And the last question, uh, that I have that I want us to talk about is <clears throat> how does spiritual discipline implement priorities? So, so far we talked about what it means uh, to 
give our, ourselves as a holy sacrifice, as a living sacrifice, how, what it means to give our body as a living sacrifice, uh, as a worship to the Lord. And the second thing we talked about was, uh, what does it mean to not to confirm to the patterns of this world? And then the, the, the last thing we talked about was how do we transform our mind? How do we transform our thought process and who we are in the Lord? And the last thing I want us to seal this whole topic is that for us to go through all of these things, for us to do all of these things, we need to have um, a discipline, a Christian discipline. Okay, that means that can look like so many different things, but the basics, the core of that discipline is going back to the Word of God. As Christians, when we say we have accepted Jesus Christ onto our life and we're starting this salvation, this journey of salvation, we are making a commitment into getting a relationship with the Lord. So and I, wanna, I want us to think about, about it this way. So when you say it can be a friendship or any kind of relationship, when you say, I wanna be friends with that person, you know, a physical person, an ugly person, when you say, I wanna be friends with so-and-so, or I wanna get in a relationship with so-and-so, uh, you just don't declare that and just sit in a corner and wait for the friendship to happen, right? You go ahead and you started spending time with that person, you started learning what that person likes, what he likes and what his dislikes is, and all of that, what interests him, and all of those things and then you try and do the things that make that person happy because you want the relationship to grow and because you genuinely like that person and because your intention and your feelings towards that person is genuine and you want it to continue to grow so you want that person to know you and you want to know that person and you want that person to do nice and good things to you for you that makes you happy and you will do the same in return right so that is called a commitment. And if you don't keep that commitment and keep that promise, that relationship is, is gonna die. It's not gonna continue for long. You're gonna drift apart. You don't even know what happened. At some point in life, you just realize that you don't even talk to that person anymore because you drifted apart because you didn't follow through with your commitment. Your relationship with the Lord is the same, more or less. You know, when you say I've accepted Jesus Christ and I'm gonna start this journey of salvation, you're making a commitment of saying, Lord, I will be intentional in knowing you and knowing your ways and getting to know you and knowing what makes you happy, what makes you sad, uh, what your desire is, what your plan is over me, over my life, because he's the creator of the world. He has plans for you. You know, he's more than a mere human being. So <clears throat> you're making that promise of a commitment to God and God is making the same kind of promises for commitment to you and for sure 100% God is going to keep that commitment that promise uh, because all along all he wanted to have with you is that pure and genuine relationship so he's going to offer you genuine love unconditional love and undivided attention to you all the time and he's going to learn you always even though he knows you through and through you'd still be intentional in knowing you and seeing you grow so the other side of that relationship is your commitment that's what salvation is about the other part of salvation is you making a commitment to do the same in that relationship to know god to to be intentional in that relationship and in that friendship and to be consistent you know and to continue making that relationship grow so to do that uh, you need to be disciplined enough you need to be intentional on how you lead that relationship because you made a promise you made a commitment and that discipline at the end of the day comes to uh, giving time to the lord as much as you give time to your friends and to your family each and every day uh, you have to be intentional enough uh, to give time to the word of god and to your prayers and to your worship so that you can keep that commitment and within that commitment comes all the things that we've been talking about so far and we talked about today which is uh, transforming your mind and offering your body as a living sacrifice so that as a holy worship comes in that commitment and that time you give to the Lord. And that doesn't mean, um, it looks different for everybody, that commitment. It's not a formula, like we don't have it down to a science on how you can keep, keep your commitment to the Lord. But at the end of the day, the core of it is that you are sure uh, 
uh, that you're keeping that relationship going. It's growing, it's going somewhere, you're not stuck or you're not going backwards or you know, you're not drifting apart. That could happen. You can drift apart from the Lord if you're not intentional about, does he drift away from you? Never, but will your actions and decisions uh, put you further and further away from his heart and knowing him? 100% as well. So if for us to transform our mind every day and not confirm to the way we used to do things pre-salvation, we have to be intentional about our commitment to the Lord and how we do that. But then again, that doesn't have a formula. For instance, for some people, waking up in the morning and spending an hour reading the Word of God and praying and worshiping might work. For some people, uh, spending few, an, like you know, an hour or so before bed, uh, reading, journaling, uh, praying, worshiping might work. For some people, they might do it throughout the day. Uh, but what I advise you is find that one thing that works for you. Find that one thing that works for you and then stick to that. You just need to be intentional. God just sees your intention and your genuinity and how you do it. Because um, when I was young, I used to feel bad uh, because, you know, uh, Christian families, other Christian families, you know how they are. Like if you don't wake up at four in the morning and pray for like two hours with your mother, uh, then you're not truly a Christian, then you don't truly know God. So every time my mom would, every morning, my mom would wake me up at like three, four, five in the morning and I'm like so sleepy. I have no intention spending time with the Lord. I don't want to pray. I don't want to talk to him at that hour because I'm not a morning person. Like I'm not. You do not want to talk to me in the morning. But because he always used to yell at me for not praying enough or for not acting like a Christian enough, I always used to think that my uh, love for the Lord and my commitment for the Lord is not genuine enough because I didn't do the things that my mom used to do as a Christian. But growing up, I realized every friendship is different. Every relationship is different. Like I have three, four people in my life that I call friends, like close friends, right? But my friendship with each of my friends is not the same. I don't interact with one of my friends the same way I interact with another of my friends, right? So it's the same with the Lord. Like all of us are his kids, all of us are his friends, and he is Lord over all, but our interaction to him is not always the same completely different. My relationship with the Lord is different than my mom's relationship with the Lord, how she does it, how she approaches him. So growing up, realizing that helped me to find what works for me. Well, if I'm not a morning person, then I need to find a time throughout my day where I can actively uh, sit down and intentionally communicate with the Lord and spend time with him so that I can transform my mind. Uh, because the only way I can transform my mind is by grounding myself in the truth. And that is relationship. And God is very intentional uh, about making himself God over ourselves. And the only way I can transform myself is by making that time so that he can be God over my life, every aspect of my life. And now finding that routine that works for you, it might be 10 minutes out of your day, five minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, or maybe your whole day, it doesn't matter. Finding how you enjoy relationships with God and then sticking to that pattern and being intentional about it by knowing that this life is not about you and you can't do it on your own because you've already made that commitment when you accepted Christ uh, is how you transform your mind. Now I know that is very difficult to swallow. The fact that when you realize that life is not about you, the reason why you need to transform your mind, you know, and like, you know, renew your mind and all of that is not so that you can be the greatest person in the world. It's basically because God, so that God can be glorified over your life. That might be hard to swallow, but that is the whole point of salvation. So today I wanted us to talk about that. So thought, think about these questions and think about what it means to transform yourself and to renew your mind and not to confirm to the pattern of this world, what those things mean to you and what lies you need to unlearn, what unhealthy practices and thought process that you need to unlearn and how you can ground yourself in the truth of God each and every day so that you can be transformed and so, so that you can be a vessel 
uh, God can use to unveil his glory here on earth. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in to yet another youth service. Uh, I'm so glad you decided to spend time with us. Uh, I will see you guys next week.